Man, oh man, oh man. The coming economic tsunami. Are you going to sink or swim? I am just looking at the world with a seasoned financial eye. I can go walk into a business and within five minutes ascertain if it's going to be in business six months from now or it's on the way out of business. This is what being an entrepreneur for 23 years has given me the ability to do. It's given me the insights to do. And we're in a very strange situation right now. At the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of government assistance came out. They stopped foreclosing on houses. They stopped evicting people. The repo man stopped repoing cars. And then there was little dribs and drabs of stimulus money given to the public. And there was a lot of stimulus money given to businesses. A lot. I actually got some of that stimulus money. And one of the things that that period of time did has created a group of people who tasted time freedom. And as a person who's had time freedom for two decades, I get to do what I want with my time. I don't have to show up at a job. I don't have to work with a boss. I don't have to do any of that stuff. And it's very addictive. So we had all these people who got addicted to time freedom, the freedom to wake up. One of the girls that I'm dating, her job stopped, you know, because to keep people because uh, they're, they're like jumping ship like cats. Everyone can work from home. And this is her routine. She sleeps in. She gets up. She handles her dogs. Then she works for a bit. Then at three o'clock, she goes to the gym and she could never, ever go back to working in the office again. She could never go back because now she has a situation where she can dictate her time and do things that she likes to do and do things that make her comfortable. And, you know, for her, she's in a good situation. She makes hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. But here's the big issue. We have people who are broke, don't have a long term emergency fund, don't have a short term emergency fund, don't have no money, credit cards maxed out. We have people living with someone. And technically, if you're living with someone and your name is not on the lease or the mortgage, you're homeless. And we have all of these people who are in these desperate, bad financial situations. And because they had a taste, they had a taste. There's, it's like when you do drugs, you're chasing that first high. That first high, as I understand it, is your best high. And that's what people are forever chasing. So these people who got used to the time freedom even though they don't have any money, they're not going to work. So this period in time created a crazy um, situation for a large segment of low wage people on the lower economic strata. These would be your servers. These would be people washing cars. These would be people working in the hotels this is the segment of society that is going to get hit so hard in the global reset because they don't have any skills. They don't have anything unique or special about them. And these people are going to sink. They're going to sink because they want to have that time freedom. They want to have those options. They want to have all of these particular options open and available to them, but they don't have the talent. They don't have the skill base. They, they don't, they have nothing. And 
what I'm going to see is this group of people. The uh, let's call them the low impulse control people. I used to date this chick by the name of Bailey. Bailey was fucking gorgeous. And Bailey had low impulse control. Very, very low impulse control. Bailey ended up being arrested five times by the police. And I had to make a decision. Because Bailey was a liability, even though she was beautiful, nice fat booty. This girl could get me caught up in something because she could not control herself. She could not control her emotional impulses. Low impulse control. She, I mean, I'll put a picture of her in the community section. And, you know, this was the type of chick that didn't get arrested back in the day. But see, everything has changed. Everything has changed. It used to be that women could show a little cleavage or whatever and get out of a traffic ticket. Not anymore. The system doesn't care if you're cute. The system doesn't care if you have big titties. The system wants that revenue. And this is what's going to happen. These people in the lower economic strata, you're going to see an explosion of crime. Because they got that taste. And this is one of the things that happens to a lot of former athletes who get that taste, they get that money, they get that lifestyle. And then when they get cut, they can't go back to normal because they had that taste. They know what the good life is. They know what it's like to walk into a restaurant and someone's like, you're so-and-so. You get a free meal. They, they know what that's like. They know what that status, that position is like. And once it's gone, it is very, very hard to come to grips with. Because you used to be the man. And see, for the people in the lower economic strata, they never were the man or the woman. They never were. And one of the things that's going to happen, you're going to see generational poverty explode. Because, you know, I get a lot of people, and I've been talking about this for years, that if you're a parent, one of the best things you can do is move yourself and family to a high-income neighborhood. Because your kids will be exposed to people. Because here's the thing. There was a study done of people with 140 plus IQs and it went across all social economic segments. And guess which kids did well in life? You had a little kid in the ghetto with a genius level IQ, right? And you had a little kid in the suburbs with a genius level IQ. All of the kids who had wealthy parents did fantastically better than the equally high IQ'd kids who were living in the ghetto. So environment plays a big, big role in your success in life. George W. Bush. I don't think anyone would even argue that Obama was, from an intellectual standpoint, much smarter than George W. Bush. But... George W. Bush was a millionaire before Obama. George W. Bush was rich, even though he wasn't that bright. He was rich long before Obama. Obama had to become president and then exit the Oval Office to become a millionaire. George Bush was a millionaire before he sat in the presidential chair. See, these environments, and this is one of the reasons that this global reset is going to be so bad is a lot of people never had a shot. I mean, they were fucked up from jump. And what you're going to see is, like I said, crime. If you want to get into any type of security, physical security, computer security, these they're going to explode because you're going to see a tremendous amount of crime across the board you're going to see crime petty crime credit card crime 
computer crime is going to explode because these people, they got a taste. They got a taste. And they don't want to go back to what they were doing before the pandemic. So you can like one of the things that Google has done is you can have my password to my Google account. But if you try to sign in from an unknown device, it's going to make you qualify yourself. And if you can't qualify yourself, you can't get in because this is just a result of how much hacking has been going on online. I mean, essentially, um, my Craigslist account, I don't even log in. I have them send me a link where I can log in because crime, pet, you know, like my Facebook account, my Facebook account got hacked. I lost my Facebook account. Uh, you're going to see all of this stuff, malicious uh, hacking, criminal hacking. You're going to see a lot of this stuff. It's going to happen. It's going to be incredibly disruptive for certain people. And this is one of the reasons that for people who are not financially prepared, this is going to be a rough 10 years. I expect this transition period to be about 10 years. Um, we're about two years into it. So we got another eight years because like with my car rental business. This has happened several times because people don't have financial backup because they're living with like if you just have one checking account and one debit card, you are living financially reckless. You're living financially reckless. Like right now, I'm looking at my desk. I got to like 35 credit cards probably have about 30 bank accounts i've got like two personal the majority of my bank accounts for business i've got financial backups out the ass uh, i've got multiple credit cards i have multiple business credit cards so if something happens to one credit card i have another one uh, this sometimes happened at the gas pump where for some reason, one of my credit cards will not be accepted. And I'll just slide another one in there and we're good to go. But so many people are living on the edge with no surplus, no abundance, nothing. These are the people who are going to be the first wave of the reset. <laughs> The first wave of the reset is going to be all the people in the lower economic strata because they're already they're already hanging on to the last rung of the ladder. They're all they're barely making it. They're barely surviving. They're going to be the first hit. That's going to be the first wave. And the second wave is going to be skilled labor. And you're like, wait a minute, there will be plumbers. There will be. Um sheetrock guys there will be framers these guys are going to get reset and they're not going to get reset because they don't have skills that's not the issue they're going to get reset because they don't have a work ethic i have a number of uber drivers who rent my cars the ones who get in the car and drive i have no problems with them paying me but there's a certain group like this someone asked me the other day could i reduce the price of a car I ignored that message because if he turns that car in, it will be gone within a few hours at the current price. So I'm not lowering the price because he wants to buy some wedding gift. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to ignore that because here's the deal. If you're an Uber driver or a Lyft driver, you should have a power day. Your power day is Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And but people, once again, that taste, that time freedom. They want that time freedom. They want the freedom, the time to just like this morning, like last night I was fucking and I woke up this morning and I fucked again. And then uh, essentially I'm kind of taking the day off. I can do that whenever I want to. In fact, I may just put it in low gear for the rest of the week or maybe the rest of the month because I've been thinking about taking some time off and resetting everything to prepare for the small segment of people 
we're going to thrive in the global reset. See, the lower, econ the lower economic strata, the, the, the maids, um, the, well, some, some people, some people in the lower economic strata with a good work ethic, they're going to be fine. But that's going to be the wave that's going to get hit first. And the second wave is going to hit the skilled labor that doesn't have a work ethic, that doesn't want to get up and get it every day. Like, I mean, people don't understand money. They don't understand how money is made, but they do understand their feelings. They understand about being comfortable. They understand about chilling and relaxing and going to the football game and going to the boo bash. They understand that. And you've got people like one of the things when I was building this YouTube business, I had $300,000 in the bank. You know what I did? I lived on 1500 bucks per month and I worked 12, 16 hours a day. I had $300,000 in the bank and I worked like I didn't have it. You got people out here who are broke taking days off, taking vacations, hanging out, trying to do, trying to relax. See, Th this, these are the people who are going to be reset. Like I said, the first wave is going to be lower economic strata. The second wave will be skilled labor. These will be people with degrees, skill sets, but they don't have a work ethic. They're going to get reset. You're going to have a guy who has a plumbing certificate who's going to be living in the van because he doesn't want to work. He don't want to work, man. And this, this is another thing. Because I'm getting ready to restructure everything i made some moves because this channel i'm going to be talking about the economy and economics only and then savage finance has become the new hustlers kung fu and then i'm going to start another personal finance channel and then i'm going to do the lost kings and i changed the name of digital money to organic money so there's going to be a lot of new and hot training coming because there's going to be a group of people who are going to raise up their hands. It's like, I want to win. I want to win. And I'm going to help those people win by giving them the skill sets, giving them the training. Because once again, the average person in America is stupid. And many people say, like, that's really demeaning. Really? You got folks who are using the words they don't even know the meaning of, and they think they're smart. I've seen a vast amount of stupidity from the less than, from people who, with no accomplishments. All they have is a comment or opinion. They have nothing of substance to offer the world. Nothing. And these people are going to be reset. And they're going to be reset so hard that it's going to impact their family for the next five or six generations. See, that this is one of the things that, that happens. If you are not working hard to build something, to create something, guess what you give your children? You give them your do nothing lazy ways. That's going to be their inheritance from you. Your do nothing lazy ways. That's what they're going to get from you. And then they're going to repeat the cycle that you have created. It's going to go on and on and on. You will never live in a neighborhood like this. You will never be a millionaire. There's the road wearing bitch talks about millionaire game. The more I listen, well, I don't really listen to him, but the more that I think about it, the more I think that he's not a millionaire. See, I grew up, well, I didn't grow up. I for well, actually in the way I did grow up. I lived in Sandy Springs, zip code 30327 for the last 13 years. And I've lived around real millionaires. And they act nothing like this fool. They act nothing. I got friends worth $100 million. They don't act like this fool. 
But see, the fool is putting on the show because you guys don't know what real money is. You guys don't know what real wealth is. You guys don't know what a trust fund baby is. You just don't. I, from the Craigslist protocols on the Lost Kings, I put up her picture. Girl I met through the Craigslist protocol. She's worth $10 million. Her father did something with the Mexico, Mexico government and it created a trust fund for her and her two sisters. For her and her sister. She gets a check every month like clockwork. You don't know nothing about trust fund babies. You don't know nothing. Like her situation was so sweet. If she needed a house, she'd just go to her trustee and like give him the price of the house and they would cut her a check. If she needed a car, you know, she got her monthly check. If she needed something big, she just talked to her trustee and they hook her up. You don't know anything about that. You don't know what it's like to date a woman with so much money she could take you to Paris. You don't know what that's like. Because you're listening to a robe wearing little bitch who's giving you nothing but fancy talk and no substance. Nothing. No substance whatsoever. So guys, the coming economic tsunami. Are you going to sink or are you going to swim? What are you going to do? Because it's coming. It is on its way. It's already starting to ripple through the lower economic strata. And it's starting to start claiming a lot of people in the so-called fake ass middle class. Because it comes back down to, are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to manage your money correctly? Are you willing to have financial surplus? Or are you just going to keep trying to play these, what I like to call rich folk games? There are many people on YouTube that will convince you that the reason that they're financed their supercar is they don't want to disturb their investments, which is bullshit. Which is bullshit. They don't make enough money, but they will not tell you that. They will have you believing in a false narrative. They don't have the money to pay cash. They don't. Because they don't have a firm grasp of money. Like there's a guy, Richard, with the plain Vago. And he has videos talking about you're not going to get rich investing no time soon. See, these guys are feeding you a false narrative that if you invest, you're going to have all this money. The road wearing bitch. He has not been invested long enough to be a millionaire. Even if he had put a hundred K away per year, that ain't enough money to afford him the lifestyle that he pretends to showcase. I have a feeling that that Porsche ain't in his name. I have a feeling that the Tesla is not in his name. I just have a feeling. I have a feeling, but to back to you in this global reset, are you going to do what you need to do to keep yourself from being reset, to keep your family from being reset, to be able to thrive? Because like I said, there's going to be a small number of people who are going to transition up during the global reset. There's going to be a bunch of people who will be moving down and there will be a small group of people who will move up. There will be new millionaires created. There will be new billionaires created. But these people are already working. They've been working. In my neighborhood, it is typical to see someone who's clearly older in a Porsche or a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce. You want to know why that you consistently see that? The reason is it takes time to build wealth. And that's typically why most of the wealthy people that you see are old. Because it takes time. You're not going to get rich quick. You're not going to get the Lambo. You're not going to be able to live the Instagram lifestyle. Most of the people living the Instagram lifestyle are lying to you. They don't have no money. They have a high income and they use this income to leverage certain toys to get you all juiced up. But 
I digress here. How many of you want to prevent from being globally reset? How many of you want to create a sustainable and durable future for your, your family? How many of you are on that tip? How many of you want to have that kind of life? How many of you want to go to the bank and have more money in the bank than you need? How many of you want to be living a life of surplus, a life of abundance? How many of you want to live that life? How many of you want to get to that next level? How many of you are willing to put in the work to do what you need to do? This is Glendon Cameron, and this is the Institute of Economic Thought. Back in your ear again.